Hey, what's up, tubers? This is the SHTF Hunter. And uh, the title is not clickbait. <laughs> I'm going to kind of be doing a little review of my Wazoo belt. I recently went on a cruise last week. Um, and it kind of, the, I knew I was going through security. And I thought it was actually going to be like TSA security, but it wasn't. It was like Carnival, some security contractors Carnival had contracted, I guess. And uh, and I walked through a metal detector three times, and it did not pick up my Wazoo belt or the contents of my belt, which there's not a whole lot of metal, actual metal stuff inside the belt, but... Um, I'm, let me start by saying I'm not advocating you put a bunch of illegal stuff in this and go through security. <laughs> uh, this is my disclaimer. Uh, what, what you if you buy one of these belts and walk through, you know what you stash in that's that's on you. So, uh, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I put in this and this buckle i think i read it was actually stainless steel i don't know but it did not the buckle did not set off the uh metal detector and that kind of surprised me um so my wazoo belt these these belts are kind of expensive they're like 75 dollars and if you don't know the whole thing's velcroed and opens up like this and the whole thing opens up. And uh, one of the reasons I, I wanted one of these belts is I, it, it's more of an escape and evasion type thing, you know, not so much for wilderness survival, but, you know, escape and evasion. And I don't have it outfitted exactly like I want it just yet as far as all the contents. Uh, now, Wazoo does make, I think, like two different survival kits to put in this. And their two survival kits are like, I think each one of them is like fifty dollars, and and I, I just thought it's kind of exp kind of expensive, and it's kind of dinky anyway. The the belt itself is like seventy five, and uh, but I want to show you the contents of some of what I got. We'll start right here. This is about the lap of the, or about the middle of the back. Like I say, I want this more for escape and evasion. Um, first thing is a handcuff key. Now, I got a string attached to make it easier to hang on to. Uh, I won't have to go back and fix the string, but uh, so put that on there so it'll be easier. So, like, if you're handcuffed behind your back, you can still get to this. Um, now this was originally in the check bag, uh, TSA rules now. I think on the carry-on, you can have a blade uh, knife. If I'm not telling you wrong, you can have a knife as long as the blade ain't no bigger than, I think, an inch and a quarter. But it can't be a lock blade. So this is a lock blade. It's a little sawed knife I bought a long time ago. So by TSA regs, unless something's changed, TSA regs wouldn't allow this. But if it wasn't a lock blade, it might. But so... I only carried this through security twice or through the metal detectors in the back. So, uh, that was my cutting tool. Um, originally, and I didn't take it with me. This is a little piece of a hacksaw blade. It come on the one of them uh, magnesium, uh, one of them cheap magnesium fire kits you get from like Walmart. And, uh, I thought you know, this might come in handy, like cutting a, a pair of uh, zip cuffs or a rope or something like that. So, and going forward in the future, this is going to be next to the handcuff key, probably not the knife. I actually want to put a bit a better knife in there, but uh, because of the width, you know, you're kind of limited. I actually got this Kershaw. I've been thinking about trying. I really like this little thing, but. It's still too big, and uh, I actually kicked around the idea about trying to take the handles off, see if it, it you know, see if I could make it small enough to go inside the belt. But uh, so, like Jason, I, I watched Jason Hansen videos. He's uh, like a XCIA guy, and 
you know, the information you get from his videos is, is priceless about how he survives overseas and stuff like that. But on his cruise, so I went to, uh, one, one stop was in Dominican Republic and another one was, uh, Grand Turk Island. And then there was Half Moon Cove, which is actually owned by Carnival. But, uh, you know, Dominican Republic, you know, when I go to a country, I kind of, I, I like to know about where I'm going, you know, as far as what you call the geopolitics or, uh, you know, if it's a crime infested place. And I've heard Dominican Republic can be a kind of a rough place sometimes. A couple of years ago, this is something my brother-in-law wasn't aware of. A couple of years ago, I'd actually seen on the, they'd reported on news where ter uh, tourists, like three tourists had died in Dominican Republic because uh, from drinking alcohol, some type of, they have some type of alcohol down there they're proud of. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not sure what alcohol they drunk, but you know, I, I did hear about three tours a couple of years ago that died down there from drinking alcohol, homemade hooch, I guess. But <laughs> go through to you another thing that like Jason Hansen uh, recommended. Let's see, let's see if I can find it. Keeping uh, keeping about two hundred dollars in your uh, belt because you know, as an emergency, like like say something happens. Uh, just for example, if I'm on, if I get left on one side of the island, I need to get back to, you know, the carnival ship. Uh, you know, I can uh, flash this and somebody in front of somebody that's got a a car and say two hundred dollars, take me back to the ship, you know, real quick or something like that. So, so I don't get boat left. <laughs> um, also had a fire steel. Mm, a minute. P38 can opener. This is actually belonged to my dad. Uh, he kept it on his keychain all the time. Well, P38. Uh, I had this Olight Mini in there. So... Um, I think like I, I'm going to do a more in-depth video when I get it outfitted the way I want. And uh, the only other thing I have in here is I got some uh, I got some Benadryl. I think some Motrin or something in here. I got a couple of Benadryls. Um, I'm going to put Benadryl and aspirin in here, and I'm also going to put water for pure water purification tablets in here. Um, the, you know the reason the, my wife she has allergies she's you know and so i decided to keep a couple bin drill in here mostly for her or, or you, you never know whose life you might save with being drill or you know keep some uh aspirin for somebody if somebody's having a heart attack but so this little belt it has this right here, and I think about the only thing you can put in here is like a signal mirror or something. Whatever it is, it's got to be very, very thin. So, but like I say, I'm, I'm, you know, as soon as I get this outfitted the way I want it, um, I, right now I don't even have cordage in it, but uh, when I get it outfitted the way I want it, I'll do a more in depth video and show it to you. But uh, yeah, so. Um, one question I got for viewers, it's been a while since I've been, been through uh, TSA security, like getting on an airplane, but, uh, I can't remember, do they, I just want to ask if anybody knows, uh, for sure. Um, I can't remember, do they, if they require you to take your belt off, because if you take your, you know, TSA's probably got better equipment than this, than these people had any, than Carnival security agency had but uh you know they did have an x-ray machine so they did x-ray people's bags and i know like tsa they, they have the x-ray machine too so i can't remember if somebody could let me know when you go through airport security if they make you take off your belt and put it in through the x-ray machine but i would like to know that for sure but i can't like i said i can't remember it's been a while and uh but yeah, you know, this is wor definitely worth something, something worth looking into. Uh, this is the SHTF Hunter, and 
And if you, I'll, I'm, like I say, I'm going to do another video later on, but so it's a CF hunter. I'm out.